Welcome. This presentation will go over the Kentucky Land Judging Manual for both FFA and 4-H. At the time of this publication, the University of Kentucky has this document listed as 4BA08MI, which was released in early 2022, and then updated again in 2023 with some minor edits, and is listed as 4BA08MJ. Starting with the MI version, it has some significant changes to the contest that was updated from what it was in the previous 20 plus years. This new manual removed a couple of conservation methods that were considered obsolete in Kentucky and added or updated some conservation methods that are more modern and applicable to today's use as well as teach nutrient levels in cropland, according to the University of Kentucky's publication AGR1. Also with this document, a home site contest was also added to the manual as a separate contest. More information on the home site contest will be made available in the near future with its own presentation. We will begin with slope as the first sole property to discuss. It is an extremely important property as it affects numerous conservation measures and also is one of the five soil forming factors, or in other words, how the soils were created. Slope is simply a calculation of rise over run. In other words, how many feet up and down a hill divided by how many feet away from you. In Kentucky land judging, the distance will always be 100 feet. This is very important as it will make the slope percent a very easy calculation. It will always be how many feet up and down a hill divided by 100, which is simply just moving the decimal place and making a percent out of it. So a one foot rise will be equal to 1% slope. A five foot rise will be equal to a 5% slope. It is important to note that when estimating the slope, you must look at something or imagine something at the same eye level height to get the correct slope. The picture on the screen shows a person measuring a slope using a spot on the tree that is the same height as their eyes. If there is no object, then you must imagine a spot the same level as your eyes are looking to get the correct slope. This is challenging and takes practice to become good at it. As mentioned, you must practice estimating slope a lot. Kentucky Land Judging Contest and the National Land Judging Contest does not allow any slope measuring devices during the contest. So it is important that you practice this one property the most as it has significant outcome on the entire contest. As it was mentioned earlier, this affects several conservation practices as well as the prime determination of land capability class of the soil. Once you get to a B slope, 2 to 6% slopes, you will be checking yes for many conservation methods as we are getting on ground that is sloping and we are needing to reduce the amount of soil erosion by water. When you get to an E slope, 20 to 30% slopes, you must mark yes for proper pasture management. And when you get to an F slope, which is 30 to 50% slopes, then you must mark yes for proper forest management. Remember, A slopes through D slopes, or in other words, 0 to 20% slopes, are considered good cropland slopes. 20 to 30% slopes are too steep for cropland and best used as pasture land. And slopes over 30% are best used for forest land. So how do you practice measuring slopes? The answer is build a slope finder. There is a slope finder chart on the very last page of the Kentucky Land Judging Manual that you can use to build your own slope finder that is very inexpensive. You can also go out and buy a clinometer to practice measuring slopes but those can cost nearly $200 each and can be very expensive if you're on a tight budget. 
To build a slope finder, all you need is the chart on the last page, a board to glue the chart onto, a piece of string with a weight at one end of it, and a thumbtack to attach the string to the board. I attach my paper to the back of a clipboard so I can get double use out of it. You can also use half inch plywood that is cut about the same size as paper and glue the paper onto the board. Make sure that the paper is exactly straight with the board and you can use the top of the board as a siding line to measure your slope. Otherwise you will need to add two pins to create a siding line. I also added a large rubber band around my board to hold the string in place when measuring the slope so it doesn't move while I'm reading the slope on the chart. This is completely optional. To use the slope finder, you must measure from two objects that are the same height from the ground that are 100 feet apart. You can practice with your eye height to another object that is also at your eye height. Hold the slope finder and use the top edge to go from one object to the other, allowing the string to dangle straight down. Then, tilt your slope finder slightly to the side to keep the string from moving, or release your rubber band so that it can hold it. And finally, read the slope percent line on the chart to get your slope. You can also use your slope finder to determine the unknown height of an object. On level ground, stand 100 feet away from the object and aim your slope finder to the top of it. Read what the slope finder says and change that percentage to feet. So in other words, 25% would equal 25 foot tall object. Then you need to add the distance from the ground to your eyes. Add that to the distance of the total height. If your eyes are 5 feet from the ground, then add 5 feet to that 25 foot object which would give you a final answer of a 30 foot tall object. If you're not on level ground, then you have to measure the top height and measure the bottom of the object to get a bottom height. You take your top height minus your bottom height to get the total height. As you measure downhill from where you're standing, that would be a negative number. As you measure uphill, that would be a positive number. When, remember, when subtracting these two heights, uh, two negatives will equal a positive. Erosion potential. As the name suggests, this is how likely a site is to erode, or the potential to erode. So this is actually looking into the future of what could happen, whereas the other soil property, amount of erosion, is what has already happened and where we currently are with the current topsoil thickness. There are two factors that affect erosion potential, slope and soil depth, but severely eroded soil can also be a factor as well. As you know, the steeper the soil is, the less water will infiltrate into the soil, and thus there will be more runoff generated. The greater the runoff there is, the greater potential for erosion. As for soil depth, the more soil you have, the less of an impact there will be from soil eroding away. When the soil has a depth of moderate or shallow, then erosion has a much larger impact on the rooting depth and ability to supply moisture to plants. Removing more soil by erosion is a much larger impact on moderately deep and shallow soils than the soil that is deep. Also, the deeper the soil is, the more water it can hold before becoming saturated and causing runoff. Therefore, a and B slopes with deep or moderately deep soils will be the best situation and it will have a rating of none to slight. As you go steeper, it becomes more limiting or severe. A C slope, for example, the best you can do is a moderate and D and E slopes are severe and an F slope 
will always be very severe. Landform. Landform is the physical feature of the Earth's surface formed by natural causes. In Kentucky land judging, we will identify one of five different landforms. There are floodplains, terrace, upland hillside, upland ridge, and karst. I will now go over each one of these briefly. Starting with upland ridge, this is the uppermost part of the landform, the top of the hill or the highest point. Generally, the slopes are A or B slopes, but we could also see some C slopes in some parts of Kentucky. Upland hillsides. This is the sloping part of the hill. Generally, the slopes are B slope to F slope. This typically has the most limitations due to slope of the ground. Terrace. Terrace is also known as a second bottom and are old floodplains that rarely flood or they actually no longer flood anymore as the stream or river has downcut enough in the current floodplain so that when it floods it can no longer reach up as high as the terrace anymore. This is usually the next step up from an active floodplain. In smaller watersheds, there may not be a terrace as it goes straight from a floodplain to the upland hillside. Floodplain. The active flooding area or a flood zone that floods when heavy rains fall. When a stream or river overflows its banks, it is the floodplain that is covered by water and sediment from the flooding event. Generally, these floodplains are on A or B slopes. A stream or river must be within the vicinity, but not necessarily in the judging site, but somewhere nearby that would be the source for the flooding to occur. Flooding can be frequent, occasional, or rare. Karst. An area that has sinkholes due to dissolving limestone bedrock. This occurs only in certain parts of Kentucky and is not statewide. A field tile blowout in a cropland that creates a hole in the field is not a sinkhole. If a site is set up with a tile blowout in it, it should be marked on the site card noting that it is either a field tile blowout or that karst is not the correct answer. When the karst landform is present, it will override all other landforms and be the correct answer. This special landform is extremely important to identify as it has tremendous amount of limitations and concerns dealing with it. Everything from buildings collapsing into sinkholes, farm equipment falling into sinkholes, areas suddenly sink and form ponds and close depressions, or to close depressions opening up and causing water contamination problems to underground water systems are all examples of limitations and concerns with karst landforms. Thank you very much for watching this video on land judging in Kentucky. If you should have any questions about any of the material covered or any other items in the Kentucky land judging manual, please feel free to contact your local USDA NRCS office or county extension office. They will be able to get you in contact with a sole scientist who can further explain or answer any questions you may have. Again, thank you very much.